Yes, we threw each one of these X Elite laptops into the freezer to get a massive boost in performance on battery power. And no, it's not for the reason that you think. It's not because the X Elite is a super hot chip that literally can't handle the heat. Well, it's actually because of the choices that each different laptop OEM decides to make for the sake of battery power and fan noise. So before I show you guys the massive differences in terms of performance with us throwing it in the freezer, as well as a more realistic test that you can do yourself to get better performance, I want to talk about this issue with the Snapdragon X Elite SKUs. This one right here is the Asus VivoBook S15, and it comes with the 78 SKU, the lowest end model. We have the 80 SKU right here with the Surface Laptop 7, and we have the 84 SKU which is only available in the 16-inch Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge. But the problem is that we have a massive inconsistency in terms of performance results. Right here you can see that the fastest chip is actually getting a lower multi-core score than the mid-tier chip. And even worse, the VivoBook is scoring half the performance in terms of multi-core, which makes no sense. And yes, I do want to mention that for each of these laptops, I set the battery performance settings to high performance or maximum performance. I also went in and I set whichever ones had available performance settings, like the Galaxy, which has Samsung settings, which lets you also put it in best performance, which I did. And I even went a step above and I input Alex Zskin's ultimate performance script into Windows PowerShell to force them all into ultimate performance. And regardless of that, the VivoBook is still scoring terribly. But watch what happens when you plug them in. Now the VivoBook is scoring 14,000 multi-core points, which is much better, just a little bit behind the 80 SKU. And now the Book 4 Edge is performing by far the best, 2873 in single core and 15,690 in multi-core, which is what you'd expect if you buy the best SKU. So that means that the laptop manufacturers are choosing to downplay the performance to save battery life, especially with the VivoBook and the Book 4 Edge. The Surface Laptop 7 is actually the one that has the most consistent results. But what we're gonna focus on in this video is Cinebench because when you run a single run on battery power of Cinebench 2, 2024, somehow the Book 4 Edge scored the worst and the scores go even lower if you run a 10 minute throttling test. So we did a lot of digging and I think I figured out what is happening. And to show you guys my discovery and how to fix it, we're gonna plug these things in, run the 10 minute stress test and monitor the performance. So let's go ahead and start the runs and I'm gonna open hardware info right here. And basically what we can do is monitor the clock speeds and the temps. You can see right here, the 78 SKU is running right now at 3.2 gigahertz. It's supposed to run at 3.4. For some reason, it's already down at 2.7. Over here, we have 3.2 on the surface and also 3.2 actually coming down to three on the Book 4 Edge. And for even more inconsistencies, we can look at the CPU temps. You can see right here, we have four CPU sensors and the VivoBook only maxed out at 89 degrees Celsius, while the Surface with the 80 SKU went up to 96, quite a bit hotter, and the Book 4 Edge went up to 91. But the crazy thing is that some of these laptops are already cooled down. The VivoBook with the 78 is at 76 degrees, 75 degrees Celsius. The Surface 93, 95, 96 Celsius, it's pushing the performance without slowing down. And the best skew is going down to 72, 73, 75 degrees Celsius. And now only after a couple of minutes, the VivoBook is at 2.7 gigahertz across the board. Same for the Surface, it now clocked down and the Book 4 Edge is at three gigahertz for these eight cores, but these cluster of four is now at 2.5. And the really weird thing about all of this is that Apple allows their chips to hit 107 degrees Celsius maximum, and none of these got anywhere close to it. We only hit 96 
on the surface. And these chips are supposed to run at 3.4 to 3.8 gigahertz base clock, but they're all now between 2.5 to 3 gigahertz down clocked, which makes absolutely zero sense looking at the current temps, 78 to 80 degrees right here. We have 92, 94 degrees on the surface and only up to 76 degrees on the book for edge, there is no reason for these chips to get clocked down, except there could actually be one, which is the surface temperature of these laptops. So I've pulled out our Seek thermal camera. We're gonna plug it into our iPhone. It's only been five minutes into Cinebench 2024. So now let's look at the temps. All right, looks like the Viva book is at 39 degrees Celsius, the hot spot, so I have no idea why it's clocking itself down. Looking, holy smokes, 47 degrees, now 46 degrees on the surface. That's why it's pushing its performance. This thing's super hot, 47 right there. And looking at the book for Edge, only 39. Wow, why is it so cool on, on both of these? And I just flipped all of them over and the bottom surface temperatures range between 40 to 42 Celsius across the board. And what you might not know is that there's actually legal limitations to the surface temperature of laptops that can touch your skin for prolonged periods of time. NASA has apparently set their threshold at 45 degrees Celsius. They did mention that the internal temps can be hotter as long as it can adequately get rid of the temp of the surface of the laptop itself. So in the case of the Surface Laptop 7, where it hit 47 degrees on the top, this thing is running very well, but why are the other two downclocking themselves when they're only hitting 39 to 40 to 42 degrees Celsius, not even close to 45? And the worst part about it is that all of these are running fairly quietly. If you guys remember the Intel machines from before, they would be blaringly loud trying to force the performance up, but not these. The chips are all super cool. 83, 85 degrees, 81 degrees on the Viva book, 81 also on the book for Edge. Why are the chips so cool in relation to what Apple lets you do? And there you go, the test is finished. On the 78 SKU Viva book, we got 867. On the Surface, we got 856 and 967 on the book for Edge with the best SKU. All of those numbers are faster than they were when they were not plugged in running this test, especially the VivaBook and the Book for Edge, which were limiting the performance when you don't have it plugged in. So one thing for sure is that these laptop manufacturers are letting the performance go up when you plug in, but believe it or not, this is not the fastest performance you can get because this worst SKU can actually perform higher than the rest of these two, thanks to one option that they have in the settings. Thankfully, the Asus laptop is the only one out of these three that has the My Asus app that lets you set a custom fan profile with full speed mode. And with that mode, I was able to achieve a score of over 1,000 points because the fans run at full performance, beating the other two. So this basically shows that if you're cross shopping between SKUs and you're really wanting to buy the best of the best book for Edge for a lot more money, $1,750 compared to only $1,300, you're actually gonna get worse performance because this laptop has custom fan control and that fan control by itself makes it much faster. So what's really annoying about these two machines is that the fans are fairly quiet. They're not ramping up like they used to with the Intel chips that would blare the fans at max performance to boost the performance, but these are limiting it for some reason. And we tried everything. We downloaded multiple apps for fan control and nothing is working because the fans are just not detectable so far. Maybe it's because it's an ARM chip and we have to wait for better software but we could not get those running. So, so far, this cheap Asus is performing the best thanks to the fan control. But get this, we threw all of these into the freezer running a 10 minute stress test 
on battery power and you won't believe the gain that we got. The 78 SKU scored 26% higher in the freezer, the Surface was 7.5% faster, and the Book 4 Edge was 18.5% faster in the freezer with a score of 1016, which is the highest score I've seen online altogether thanks to that freezer cooling down the surface temp of the laptop and finally letting the chip perform at higher performance. So this is really weird. It almost seems like there's some weird conspiracy by Microsoft to force the laptop manufacturers to make these chips run cooler, maybe for better battery life, and to make the fans run quieter to compare maybe to Apple's MacBooks that always run very quiet compared to Intel machines that would blare the fans and everybody would kind of laugh at how loud they get, especially when you're installing an app and the fan just goes crazy and blares out of nowhere maybe Microsoft wants them to feel nice and cool and quiet with great battery life and that's why they're forcing all of the fans and temps lower on these machines. And we literally just proved that by sticking them in the freezer and getting up to 26% better performance on battery power. And since obviously no one will be sticking their laptop into the freezer to gain performance, we're gonna be testing this, which is a pretty cheap Targus laptop cooler that you could just have your laptop sitting on while you're doing your work, only about 20, 30 bucks on Amazon, as well as this very serious heavy heat sink that's meant for basically clamshell mode that you plug in and use an external monitor with this fan that attaches to it. And we're gonna report back with the scores that we get in terms of performance improvement. All right, so we just finished about 40 plus minutes of testing with both the Targus laptop cooler and the Svalt heat sink with the fan. And we made a very interesting discovery. Max was watching the clock speeds and the temps, and he noticed that when a core hits 93 degrees Celsius, the clock speeds get cut down to 2.5 gigahertz. And then when it cools down to 88 degrees Celsius, it goes back up to 2.7 gigahertz. And that was with us using these things to test. Without them, they would go down to 2.2 gigahertz, even lower. But in terms of the performance, with the Targus laptop cooler. It was very interesting to see that we got scores almost as good as with the laptops being in the freezer just with this laptop cooler alone, except for, of course, the VivoBook, which got 1,010 points with the cooler, which is the highest score we've ever seen on an Exelite while not being in a freezer. Even outperforming the best SKU, the Book 4 Edge, that got 970 four points, which is just insane. And in terms of this Svalt thermal heat sink, we got even better performance, 3% faster on the Book 4 Edge and 6% faster on the Surface Laptop 7. Very, very fast scores. And by the way, this did not work on the VivoBook because it has a built-in rubber stand, so it couldn't get flush with the systems, but this gave us almost as good performance as we got in the freezer. But with all of that testing said and done, here are our biggest discoveries, which we have two of them. First of all, the SKUs don't even matter because regardless of what SKU you get, the clock speeds get throttled down to 2.2 to 3.0 gigahertz. Even the worst 78 SKU, which has the lowest base clock of 3.4 gigs compared to 3.8 on both of these, is higher than what we're actually seeing. And the reason is Microsoft with these Copilot Plus PCs is not allowing the fans to spin up faster, which they need to, to keep the temperatures down, which is actually the second issue. Having a temperature limit of 88 to 93 degrees Celsius for the CPU is ridiculously low. 
Apple lets their cores go up to 170 degrees Celsius. The old Intel chips went way higher. The AMD chips also higher temp limits. There's no reason for these X Elite chips to be limited so low in terms of the temperatures, and that is by far the biggest issue that's making the performance go down. So what is the solution? Well, of course you could pick up the Targus laptop cooler, or if you wanna go all out, you can get the Svalt heating block, but as far as we have right now, the best solution is to literally pick the laptop that lets you set the fan curve, which is the cheapest $1,300 VivoBook S15. That's the only one that lets you set it to full fan speed, giving you over a thousand points while not having to stick it in the freezer. Microsoft and Samsung, please give us fan control. That's all we want. Or maybe after a couple of months, there's gonna be some developers that make some apps that finally work to control the fans. That's gonna be a solution. But for now, the SKUs literally do not matter because of all of those limitations. So if you're buying an X Elite, don't look at the SKU because they don't even matter with all of this throttling that's going on. Look for the laptop that lets you set the fan control, which, is the Vivo book at the moment, or maybe there's some others that let you do the same, but that's how you get the best performance. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Share your thoughts in the comments down below on all of this testing that we did. Definitely subscribe above and check out one of those two videos right there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.